Hey, what's up everybody? This is Greg. Welcome to our Swift Scroll View School video tutorial series. In this part of the series, we'll work our way up to scroll views with a discussion of frame and bounds. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video. You'll have a chance to play around with changing the frame and bounds values on a regular view just to get a feel for how things will work on a real scroll view and to understand the bit of the theory behind them. Let's start by talking about frame. A frame is a rectangle that represents the viewable area of a view. The frame is the size and the location of a view within its containing superviews coordinate system. In this diagram, the view in question is the green view and the containing superview is in white. I remember this relationship by thinking of frame like a picture frame. The picture is positioned within the frame and the frame holds or surrounds the picture just as the superview holds its subviews. So if you look at the top left corner of the superview, its coordinate is 0, 0. And if you look at where the green view is, it's 60 points to the right and 80 points down. And its size is 200 by 200. So that's frame. It's the position and size of a view as seen by the superview. Bounds are very similar. Like frame, it's a rectangle that represents the viewable area of a view. However, bounds are in the view's own coordinate system. So the green view here is only aware of its own space in terms of bounds, and it knows nothing about the outside world. Its size is still 200 by 200, but as far as it's concerned, the origin coordinate is 0, 0 at the top left of itself. This might seem a little useless or redundant, and maybe you're thinking, of course a view's own origin is at the 0, 0 point. But let's look at what happens when you start changing this origin coordinate for both the frame and the bounds. Let's go back to frame, and this time we're looking at the frame of the white view. Since we're talking frame, that's the coordinates in the white view's superview coordinate space. And in this case, the view's superview is just the entire window. If we change the frame origin to 6080, you can see what happens. The window is the rectangle with the solid lines, and the view inside has dotted lines surrounding it. The view has shifted its position within the window, 60 points to the right and 80 points down. Notice the green view comes along for the ride since it's contained inside the white view. So by changing the view's frame origin, you'll reposition it within its super view. Now here's the interesting case of changing a view's bounds origin. If we change the bounds origin point to 6080, you can see what happens here. It's almost like the negative version of changing the frame, since the view seems to have shifted left and up instead of right and down, but that is not what's happening. You're not moving the white view anywhere. What's actually happening is you're telling the white view to start drawing itself not from the 0, 0 point as its corner, but to start from the 60, 80 position. That's an important point. Changing the bounds origin doesn't change the frame origin. They are separate values. The white view is in the same position that it's always been. What's changing is what part of the white view is being drawn into the window. As you can guess, this is actually the basis of how scrolling and scroll views work. A scroll view will stay put on the screen wherever you put it, and what changes is the stuff inside the scroll view will move around within that visible viewport. Let's get a more interactive look at the difference between frame and bounds in the short demo. Here's our starter app. There's a container view with the gray background, and inside of it is a green view. So the idea is by moving these sliders, we'll change the origin x and y of the frame and the bounds of the gray view, and then we'll see what kind of difference it makes. So I'll switch back to the code, and I already have outlets for the views and the controls, and I have actions for the two sliders already set up. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to add a private helper method down here, and that's going to just set up the text labels.
So this will set our two text labels, one with the frame origins x coordinate, and this one with the bounds x coordinate. Next, I'm going to want to call this method. So in view did load, let's just add a couple of lines to get everything set up. So we'll get the slider value set to whatever the frame and bounds are, and then we can call our helper method to update the text labels. So now when the app starts and the view is loaded, you can see the two slider values will be set to whatever the frame and bounds origin x coordinates are, and then we'll update the text labels. And so the last thing we need to do is implement these two methods here, frame slider changed and bound slider changed. So when the user moves the frame slider around, all we need to do is change the frame origin x of the container view. Note that in Swift, you can just set this one x coordinate value within the origin struct, which is within the frame property, and you can just set this directly. If you're used to Objective-C, you might be used to creating a new CG rect variable with the frame, and then you set the origins x, and then you set it back to the container view. But in Swift, you can just assign this directly. So it's just a quick one line method here. So we'll do the same thing for the bounds. And that should be it. So let's build and run and have a look. So you can see the gray view is not quite at the left edge here. And according to our label here, it's 30 points from the edge of the super view here. So if I move this, you can see the entire view moves. And of course, the green view, which is inside, comes along for the ride. I'll leave the gray view here in the center, and now let's change the bounds. And remember, changing the bounds will change what part of the inside of the gray view is going to be displayed. So as I move that, first notice that this number here, this 58 for the frame origin, it's not moving because changing the bounds and changing the frame are separate. But as I change the bounds, you can see the content inside the gray view is changing. And right now it's not clipping to the bounds. So you can see the green view is going right off screen like so. So if I change the bounds and change where the green view is and, and I change the frame, you can see again what kind of difference that makes. So just to review, changing the frame X origin changes the gray view's position within its super view and the entire view is moving. Changing the bounds x origin changes the content within the gray view. So that changes what position the green view is going to be inside its super view, which is the outer gray container. That's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we like to leave you off with a challenge. If you're still unsure about frame versus bounds, be sure to listen to the explanation again and play around with the demo app yourself. As a small warm-up challenge, you can try modifying the app so it also changes the Y coordinate in addition to the X coordinate. And that'll give you a feel for what the change looks like to vertical position in addition to the horizontal position. Otherwise, just keep on watching and there will be a bigger challenge waiting for you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.